child with a limp is a common problem which may be due to a variety of causes, some benign and others life-threatening, so it is imperative to have a practical and systematic approach. Limping patterns can be divided into those caused by pain, known as antalgic, those caused by structural abnormalities such as short leg gait or Trendelenburg gait, and those caused by neuromuscular problems such as the ataxic gait, which will not be covered here. Let's take a look at the antalgic gait. Here you can see that the patient has an aversion to weight bearing on the painful right leg with a shortened stance phase of the gait cycle on the affected side. History will reveal whether the limp is acute or insidious. The most concerning diagnosis to exclude with an acute limp is a pyogenic infection, which is an emergency due to the risk of septicemia and death, as well as permanent cartilage damage and chronic pain. Both will present with systemic features of fever and feeling ill, with septic arthritis characterized by joint inflammation and markedly reduced range of motion. While in osteomyelitis, bony tenderness is over the metaphyseal area and some range of motion is preserved. If pyogenic infection is suspected, prep the child for theatre for washout and drainage, take pus samples and start empiric antibiotics. On investigation, the ESR, CRP and Watson count will be raised. On x-ray, there will be no radiological changes within the first 7 to 10 days. Trauma is suspected based on history and x-rays, however, a lack of significant history could point to a non-accidental injury or a pathological fracture. Transient synovitis is a diagnosis of exclusion. Rheumatic fever may present with the migrating polyarthritis and other features of the Jones criteria should be looked for. If there is an insidious onset, Think of JIA. Red flag symptoms include C-spine involvement, visual changes, and signs of systemic illness, which may rapidly lead to crippling arthritis and blindness. Have a low threshold for suspicion of TB in South Africa, as it can mimic anything in its presentation. Suspect in any child with progressively worsening joint pain and stiffness over several weeks. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common and most treatable childhood malignancy and may present with an antalgic limp when there is bone pain or arthritis. Less than 5% of patients have this as the only presenting symptom and signs of bone marrow failure should be searched for. In short leg gait, the head and shoulders drop as the patient steps onto the shorter limb. There may be a vaulting gait or flexion of the knee and ankle equinus. It is important to note that these may only be noticed with a severe discrepancy in leg length. Causes of leg length discrepancy may be either congenital or acquired. Limb length discrepancy may be either true or apparent. True leg length discrepancy is detected clinically by measuring the distance between the anterior superior iliac spine to the ipsilateral medial malleolus and comparing it to that on the other side. Apparent leg length discrepancy is detected by measuring the distance between the ziphi sternum or umbilicus to each medial malleolus. To establish whether a true discrepancy is in the femur or tibia, we can do the Galeazzi test. And to determine if a femur discrepancy is above or below the greater trochanter, we can test Bryant's triangle. A Trendelenburg limp implies hip pathology. In a child, this would suggest DDH, Perthes, or Sufi. The diagnosis can be made based on the child's age and other features of the gait. This child shows the characteristic Trendelenburg gait with Perthes disease involving the left hip. Note the lean of the trunk over the abnormal hip as the hip drops on the unsupported side. Also, see the dipping of the shoulders when this child stands on his left leg. The Trendelenburg sign can be elicited by asking the patient to stand unassisted on each leg in turn. While standing on the unaffected side, the patient is able to stabilize the pelvis. When the weight is put through the affected hip, the pelvis drops on the unsupported side and the trunk leans over to compensate. Developmental dysplasia of the hip includes dislocation at birth and acetabular dysplasia. Dislocation at birth should be identified during routine neonatal examination using the Ortolani and Barlow tests. 
If the diagnosis is missed, the child may present with a Trendelenburg and a short leg limp. Perthes disease is a partial or total avascular necrosis of the femoral head. It should be suspected in the male child between 5 and 10 years, presenting with a Trendelenburg and antalgic gait. Slipped upper femoral epiphysis occurs when the proximal femoral epiphysis becomes displaced at the growth plate. It occurs with minimal trauma and often overweight adolescence. The patient presents with a Trendelenburg, antalgic and possibly short leg limp. Remember that tuberculosis can present with any of these gates, and the question should always be asked, could this be TB?